discuss this now. Joining us from central London, Femi Ulawole from the organisation Our Future, Our Choice, which is seeking a good Brexit deal for young people. And also Jonathan Isby, exit editor of Brexit Central, a website which examines all the twists and turns of Brexit. Uh, Femi, to you first of all, Theresa May says we are close to a deal. Uh, mm. The end isn't quite in sight. Can she deliver anything that you will agree with, do you think? Well, if she gives us a deal that means that young people have the same opportunities we currently have, that automatic right to live, work and love in 31 countries across Europe, rather than restricting the, country, restricting the options and opportunities of an entire generation, then I'd be happy with that. If, there were, if she offered a deal that, gave us the, that kept British sovereignty, kept the massive influence we currently have in setting the laws of Europe, which we'll ultimately end up copying anyway, according to her deal, then yeah, I'd vote for that. But the fact is, she's about to deliver a deal that not only um, harms our country economically, but also also restricts British sovereignty, and I don't think that's what anyone voted for. Jonathan Isabi, we, we always thought it would come down to the line. A lot of commentators said that this will go right to the wire. Um, do you think Theresa May can now do it? Can she get it over the line? Well, we, we wait to see over the coming days and possibly weeks, even months, as to what will happen. Because the, the European Union was always going to make this as difficult as possible for the United Kingdom, because at the end of the day, our leaving the European Union poses an existential threat to the European Union. And if we can demonstrate that we can leave the EU and do just fine as a result, it will only encourage other countries to think that possibly they might want to do the same thing. So the European Union was always going to make this difficult. But in terms of negotiating a deal, Theresa May absolutely has to remember uh, the red lines that she set herself at Lancaster House and indeed what she said at the Lord Mayor's banquet just last night, that the deal has to involve having control of our laws, our money, our borders and having the ability to do trade deals around the world. And from a lot of the noises that are coming out of Brussels over recent weeks and in terms of the deal that even she herself mooted in her Chequers proposal, I think a lot of us would say she doesn't uh, satisfy uh, the people who voted for Brexit. She has crossed some of her own red lines and she would be very <coughs> foolish uh, to cross them and, and sign a deal that didn't uh, uh, satisfy what the people expect. Mm. Uh, as I'm speaking to you, Cabinet has been going on this morning. It's just broken up. We're seeing uh, some of Cabinet uh, members leaving just now. Uh, they've been talking about Brexit. Um, we know that it w they aren't being given a, uh, anything to sign. They're just simply being given a bit of an update. Um, Femi Oluwole, um, when in, in terms of you saying people you know, are, are not getting what they voted for, um, the information was out there, wasn't it, at the time of the referendum? A lot of people are now saying, oh, I didn't know this, I didn't know that. But those who uh, pushed for Brexit will say the information was out there. You just needed to look for it. It was delivered to homes. It was on websites. People who are now complaining have their only themselves to blame. OK, the idea that the information was out there is simply wrong. Did we have a completed Brexit agreement in 2016? No, there was nothing. They were all, we were promised a whole bunch of different, completely incompatible versions of what the Brexit deal might be. At the end of this week, theoretically, we will have a solid, single Brexit. It is that sort of deal, that sort of clarity, that people should be voting on. The, when they signed the Good Friday Agreement, they sent a copy of the full text of the agreement to every single voter, and then they had the referendum. That is informed consent, where you can actually see the deal that you're voting on before you vote on it. The, otherwise, you're signing a deal and then they're negotiating the terms afterwards. Who does that? And so quite simply, the, the only democratic way forward is a people's vote on the Brexit deal. Now, if that deal does not achieve what people voted for, which is more control, a better NHS, and to be better off, then it is categorically not the will of the people. And the only democratic way forward is a people's vote. And that's why young people need to make their voices heard, that we cannot let them trash our future. We have to make our voices heard and get that people's vote. That's what our future, our choice is all about. Uh, Jonathan, do, do you think that Femi has a point there, that, that actually the full text of what Theresa May is agreeing to should be put to the public? Or do you feel satisfied that because of the role of Parliament and because of the referendum, that legally and uh, uh, it, it is morally just the right thing to do to go through Parliament? Well, the, the referendum we had in 2016 took a year 
or in fact 13 months from the moment it was declared it would happen to it actually happening. So the idea that we would go through a, a full 12 months uh, process, uh, I think people would find agonising and actually incredibly divisive and actually would only add to the uncertainty that people are indeed feeling right now. What we had in June 2016 was a people's vote, if you want to call it that. It was the biggest exercise in British electoral history. More people voted for Brexit than ever voted for anything else. And what the Remain campaign said, just as much as the Leave campaign, was that this is your one chance to make a decision about whether you want to be in the European Union or out of the European Union. And the British people made their feelings very clear. It is fundamentally undemocratic to argue that the British people should have no right to decide whether or not the deal that Theresa May has negotiated is good enough for their futures and for their children's futures. We were not given a deal in 2016. You will have a deal at the end of this month. If you are arguing that the British people have no right to decide whether or not what Theresa May has negotiated, especially given that it goes against all the promises and the red lines that she set up, then you are being fundamentally anti-democratic. Jonathan? Look, democracy is that we had that referendum in 2016. And at the general election last year, by the way, uh, both main parties committed to delivering on the referendum result and every political party that sought to reverse or stop Brexit actually saw its vote go down. Labour, so those Labour. like, so those like Femi finish. who... Those like Femi who want to stop Brexit happening and reverse the result of the, first, of the referendum that we had in 2016 uh, do not find the British public at one with them. Femi, there are those also, for, sorry, Femi, but there are those also who will say that you are not listening. You are not listening to those who voted for Brexit. You are not listening to those electorate who, who didn't vote for those parties when the election happened. And you are not mm. listening to the older generation who are very certain, many, many of them, about how they voted. Um, firstly, in, in, in the 2017 general election, Labour guaranteed in its manifesto that we would keep the benefits of the single market and, cust and the customs union. The Th Theresa May's deal does not do that. So, so the people who voted for Labour voted for a deal that is not currently happening. And also many of them who voted for Labour in that, in the, in that, in that 2017 ref um, election simply didn't want Brexit and they saw that as a way to stop Theresa May's Brexit deal. As for listening to people, that's all we've been doing. Our future, our choice has been I spent this entire year touring the countries, going to the place that places that voted Leave, Hull, Sunderland, um, um, Swansea, those places specifically speaking to Leave voters, asking them what they wanted from Brexit. They wanted more control, a better NHS, and to be better off. The deal that Theresa May has negotiated leaves us copying the rules of the EU, but giving up our dominant position in setting those rules. As for the NHS, the British Medical Association says that this is categorically bad for the NHS. And as for being better off, if you, if you damage our relationship, our trading relationship, with our biggest, closest, and cheapest trade partner, you will make life harder for the people in this country and okay. especially for the people that are, have the least already. Okay and very briefly finally Jonathan um, you've been watching the negotiations over the last couple of years have we reached the lowest point or, or has that been before? Well, there have been crunch points uh, at various points all the way through. Uh, I, I, as Boris Johnson, I think, has tweeted this morning, he said there's a lot of theatre about the way these things are done and pushing things to the last minute. We always knew it would go uh, to, to the end of the uh, possible timeline for, for negotiations. Uh, we just wait to see what happens. See, as, as to what deal Theresa May comes up with, uh, she has... Uh, set out her own red lines, and I think Parliament and the people will need to judge any deal she does sign against those. OK. Jonathan Isby and Femi Oluwole, good to talk to you both. Thank you both very much. <laughs>